Flag inclusions might be the reason why you're failing your weld test. I'm gonna show you today how you go about getting them in the first place, how do you fix them, and how do you go about preventing them. We're gonna jump right into today's lesson on slag and slag inclusions. There are a lot of different types of inclusions and other discontinuities. If you wanna learn more about those discontinuities, let us know down in the comments. But today we're gonna to specifically talk about slag inclusions with the SMAW process. What even is slag? Well, if you look at these two electrodes, specifically 7018 and 6010, they have this flux around the rod. What that flux ends up doing, it goes into the weld pool while welding and grabs any of the impurities and mixes with the non-metallic particles and pushes it to the surface of the weld where it will then harden and solidify, even helps the weld cool a little bit, not too quick. So it's kind of like a nice protective blanket of all the crap that was in the weld pool. That will end up being removed and cleaned before any more welding is done. Doesn't mean you can't trap slag other ways. Obviously welding right over top of your slag is not the best method in the world. But if you go check out our other video on can you weld over slag, at least with the dual shield flux core process, you can get away with murder. But the thing that we're gonna go over today with stick is the 2G weld process, single V-groove. We're gonna be putting a root pass in with 6010. Typically a lot of things happen right in between that root pass and hot pass. We're gonna get into those, how that slag typically gets caught, and then we'll go into some of these fills. Most of the time in the fill passes and the cap passes, it's usually the welder's fault on why there is trapped slag. You might have some machine amperage settings wrong. Maybe your angle's off, you're not stacking your beads properly, or maybe your amperage is a little cold. All these things, could come into play in order to get slag inclusions anywhere in the thickness of your weld metal or even up to the point where it's just long slag lines through your weld or just dotted up through it. Slag can exist anywhere. The biggest reason why slag is bad compared to say another discontinuity or defect, porosity is the shape of it. They're both voids, empty voids. This one's got some dust, but it's not gonna hold nothing. It's not structural. And this isn't gonna crack out as easy as this because of these sharp corners. Porosity being round, it's harder to tear around shape, and that's why slag is a little bit worse than porosity in my professional opinion. You're gonna end up seeing a lot of welding codes say that you can't have any slag inclusions compared to saying, hey, occasional 330 second pinhole every 10 feet is fine. Slag inclusions, not so much. You know what they say, you look good, you feel good. And I feel like I look like a million bucks. A shout out to all of our partners. I always kind of joke around uh, to anyone that asks like, what do I do for a living? I kind of just say I play dress up welder in my shop and teach people how to weld. I want to shout out to all of our partners because we can't do it without them. We can't do it without you guys. Today we're going to be using the Sprinter 180SI. We're also going to be using, of course, those good old Lincoln Electric 5P6010s and of course the Excalibur 7018s. Go check out all those links down in our description, guys. We've got a lot of good deals going on with our partners like Outlaw Leather and from Cayman Welding Gloves. Today Today we've got these Cayman contours. I like these kind of farm gloves. You can get them on and you can zip them up and button them up and man, they're super freaking soft. Anyway, enough of all that business. Little inverters like this don't usually do a whole lot of 60 tenon and I got to see it do some 60 tenon and it works fine, but I haven't tried it on open route. So let's burn one. Oh, BKB, let's see how she does. We've got plenty of plate here. I've got almost like two foot of this 2G plate. Got about a 330 second gap and a 330 second land. 100 amps on this Sprinter set to that 6010 mode. Let's see how much punch we got at 100. Oh, well, that's yeah, just, that's just fine. Not even really having to whip it a whole lot. Just keeping that pressure. Keeping a nice rod angle. Starting to push me out a little bit. Starting to have to provide a little bit more pressure in there. I will probably bump it up a little bit, but that's pushing through. It's definitely chewing a lot better than I thought this little Sprinter would. If you feel like you're having a really hard time blowing holes, I did a really good video, at least in my opinion, on why I'm blowing holes with my 6010 root. You guys need to go ahead and check that one out. I'm, I'm pushing on this rod. You know that little thing got some drive, because I'm pushing. Mm, what happened? What happened? I know a couple amps didn't make it that. Good thing this video isn't how to properly put a root pass in. We're talking slag today, so I'm just trying to finish it up. Now that we've got the first pass in, the slag has solidified over the top of the weld. 
this is gonna be the first opportunity for us to trap slag. So let me show you how you do it without just obviously running right over this. Now that we've got the root pass in, it's clear. The slag's there. Any welder that's doing this type of work will tell you the next step is to grind the bead. So we grind the bead. Now that the bead's all ground out, you're probably thinking to yourself, oh, well, we're good to go. To some extent you are. Some welders, it's, it is good to go, and to some it isn't. You might think that that's extremely confusing, and it kind of is. But the thing that you're supposed to look for are these. If you notice after grinding, we can't get too crazy with it. We can't get into those edges, especially with a quarter inch grinding disc that we had on there. Otherwise, we soften our bevels too much, blah, 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 blah. The biggest thing to take note is these two lines. These two lines are the toes of your root weld that you just put in and have the tendency to trap slag in those little toes. The welder slang for this is called wagon traps. So if you're a helper out on the right of way or you're doing something along these lines where you're having to grind these beads, a welder might tell you, hey, grind out my wagon tracks for me and that'll be them grinding away those lines. They might say, hey, leave a little wagon track in there. And the reason why they would only say to leave a little is because it's really easy. It'll burn out, believe it or not slag will burn out. Nothing will live in hell. All you gotta do is make sure the next pass has the appropriate amperage and you should be just fine. But if you notice there is occasional heavier slag, it never, never, ever hurts after grinding a bead to wire wheel it. We are gonna try to trap slag today. If anywhere there's gonna be something to trap, it might be right in here. We're gonna go ahead and make a mark because later on, I'm gonna pull a nick break from that area and we're gonna break it over and we're gonna see what all that slag looks like inside your well. Next thing we're gonna do, switch to 7018. We're gonna be running these 1 8 rods. Now, if you just remember me just saying, the easiest way to make sure that that doesn't stay in there is by turning up your amperage. We're gonna switch this machine over to the standard stick instead of the 6010 because it has all those special features for the 6010. And we're gonna run this 1 8 electrode that would probably do wonders at 125 amps. We're gonna run it like 100 amps, maybe 90. We think that we grabbed a 332 and we set our amperage appropriately, but really this is a 1 8 and running something too cold, definitely not gonna help your situation. All right, now while I could weld up this whole plate, I'm probably not gonna, just so you're aware. I'm probably just gonna weld in our little no-no zone. I really just wanted to get a feel for that open root and this was a perfect opportunity for that, but definitely don't wanna have to weld this whole thing. We're just gonna make sure that this little area is full of all that nasty, nasty. Not only will a low amperage trap slag, but it will also leave a lot of lack of fusion. So you want to just definitely be aware of what you're doing with this, these rods and the settings that you're supposed to be running. I honestly, with this position and this rod, I'd have this at least 125. Being that this is pretty cold, maybe, maybe we might be. It's, it's, that's the scary part, it's just all the what ifs. And being that this is also a cold weld, a lot of that times that bead won't position itself right over top of that root, which will lead to more overlap and, and rolling and lack of fusion, especially right underneath here. I can still see slag in that area. Not only that, but obviously wire wheeling and cleaning it, if you don't get all that slag off, you're liable to trap some slag. I know that we've got some issues here. We're gonna do one last thing to mess up this well. Let's go ahead and eliminate the variable of amperage. Amperage is no longer a problem. 123 amps with a 1 8 electrode shouldn't be an issue. These 7018s are a DCEP, DC positive electrode. So that's the current they're gonna wanna run. So what we're gonna end up doing is take our electrode that's in the positive now and switch it over and put it into the negative. That's gonna put it on straight polarity and we're gonna end up having less power off the stick rod and it's gonna sound really funny. These 7018s don't like being welded on DC negative. They're gonna spitter, they're gonna sputter. It's almost gonna feel like it's running cold even though we've got the amperage. So you can imagine the issues that we're gonna run into. Now this, again, shouldn't be something that you should be doing. The reason why I say that is because it's so obvious when you're running the wrong polarity with this rod. Just listen. You hear that? Oh, you can hear it from a mile away, you know. And it's not laying too bad in, but it's the wrong polarity. This rod does not like it. And why it might not trap slag in this well, anything underneath it's not gonna be anything good. When you light up and you hear the sound, do me a favor, stop what you're doing because I'm about to ruin the image and the style that you used to. I'm sorry. Don't weld on the wrong polarity. 
You know, if you take a look at this weld, the slag came off pretty okay. It looked kind of normal, but it, the weld profile is not right. It doesn't sound right. I'm telling you what's underneath what you think is okay is not. And it's obvious what you're doing because you can hear it and you can see it. Let's take a look at our machine. We're going to flip the polarity back to DC positive. We're going to keep the right amperage and we're going to put a nice cap on this thing. Pitter patter, let's cap her. You definitely can hear the difference, even see the slags peeling off a little bit better. I guess just to keep with the theme of the video, let's just not chip anything. If you notice how that slag is hanging right here, and we're only going to be attacking that thin top edge of it, with the appropriate amperage, it ought to just burn out. We probably won't have any slag in this cap, but I'm pretty confident we have slag in this coupon. Oh, alrighty then. Get this nasty stuff off. And we're going to pull us a little coupon out. Now remember, I want to remind you what trap slag is. It's fully avoidable. And if you haven't caught the gist of it by now, what do you think the one tip that I'd give anyone to avoid trapping slag? Turn it up. Make sure your amperage is appropriate. If you can run to the hotter side of any electrode, the only reason why you shouldn't, because it's something in the position or the procedure, or whatever, I don't want to get too in depth with it, but turn your amperage up. If you're running dual shield flux cord, turn your voltage up. I don't care, make it high. And if you see slag, get it out. Don't just weld over it. There's definitely nothing in my shop that can cut through this 3 8 faster than that Thermacut Extra Fire that I got hanging up on that shelf. Our drag tip on there, typically I'd put a guide on it, but ah. Nothing really has to be super exact for this. What we're doing is called a nick break test. We're just cutting a little coupon out and we really only need to worry about the weld zone. We'll put a little nick in it with a cutoff wheel and then we're gonna break it over sideways so we can see the guts. Now the point of these nicks and that nick break is to add stress risers to the weld to help it rip apart. This is a method used a lot of the times. It's just usually executed better so that you can see the inside of this weld. I didn't even rip where I wanted to rip. The piece of slag sure enough fell out. Now I want to repeat, do not do that method exactly the way you just saw it at home. Didn't rip exactly the way I wanted and that's another reason why the method is kind of flawed the way I just did it, but we still have clear evidence of slag. What you want to see to know that there's clean metal is all of this nice gray stuff. This is clean, this is a clean tear. There's sound metal in there. That's what you should be seeing. Now, this shiny bit, that was from our cutoff wheel, but this down in here, this dark gray, especially that right there, you can see I could pick it out. That is what your slag will look like as an inclusion inside of your groove. This was a completely empty cavity. Same thing on the other side of it. This is where it lived. You'll see after the slag has been removed, there are these little shiny specks that are left over and that's how you know visually that there was slag in there and what to change next time you go to weld. Always do things different on the next one like Jason Becker always says, make every weld better than your last. We'll see you on the next one. A lot of the times it's just usually executed better so that you can see the inside of this weld better. Ow, shoot that was hot. Gee whiz.